Excellent. Uh, well, welcome everyone um, to our webinar on alternative financing solutions for funding the growth of a food business hosted by Branch Food. Uh, my name is Lauren Abda, and I'm the founder of Branch Food and the host and organizer of the webinar today. Um, Branch Food is a launchpad for food innovation and one of the largest communities of food industry stakeholders worldwide. Um, at Branch Food, we work to connect all corners of the industry by way of First, programs that raise awareness about food and innovation and how companies are adapting to consumer and environmental change. Uh, second, we offer uh, consulting services for corporations that are looking for new revenue streams and seek to de-risk innovation um, and really build towards you know, a sustainable future as we think about shifting trends in the industry. Um, we also make a lot of connections uh, for our consulting clients to um, the innovation economy to really help support their connectivity. Um, and then lastly, we support companies seeking funding through our sister company, Branch Venture Group, who you will hear from later today, uh, my colleague, Marsha Hooper, who's my co-founder of the Angel Investment Network. Um, and the work of Branch Venture Group is really dedicated to funding early stage food businesses, including consumer product brands, as well as food tech and ag tech companies. Uh, so since our start in 2013. I can't believe it's been that long since we've been doing this work, but it's been a lot of fun. Uh, we worked with over 900 businesses, big and small, invested over $4 million in early stage food and food related startups, and hosted over 230 events. Uh, we're honored to be doing this work and appreciate the opportunity to share more about it with you today. You can learn more about all of our work at branchfood.com and branchventuregroup.com, or of course, reach out to me, Lauren, at branchfood.com. I'm more than happy to field um, your requests and your work. Um, so with regard to our events and programs, um, our webinar today is supported by the Rhode Island Commerce Corporation, which has a keen interest in supporting scaling food businesses in the state. Um, additionally, as part of this webinar, we're very grateful for the partnership and support of um, all of our partners, including Hillary Hughes, attorney and chair of the business group at Foley Hoag, uh, a legal, a leading legal firm supporting food businesses nationally and internationally. Uh, we're also grateful for the support of Charlie Malia, who's a senior account executive at Connect Pay, a payroll and HR provider. Uh, Branch Food is a client of this company, um, and we've really appreciated their support. Uh, and lastly, the Cambridge Innovation Center, which many of you, if you're tuning in from Boston or Rhode Island, um, know because it is a co-working space in those locations, uh, but they have many more locations um, across the United States and around the world uh, for those individuals looking to connect with community um, and co-work along with other um, relevant businesses. Um, if any of those services speak to you, please reach out to us. We're more than happy to connect you with these individuals um, to support your business growth and uh, whatever services um, they may be offering that you are in need of. So in addition to this webinar, um, uh, also through the work of um, our partnership with Rhode Island mm -hmm. Commerce Corporation, um, we are facilitating a number of different other um, resources that we've developed, including our Connections for Growth Mentorship Program, which helps to match entrepreneurs with trusted industry experts that can help advise on the most pressing business needs. If you're interested in that, um, please fill out our brief survey, which we'll include in the chat um, over the course of this session and we're happy to follow up directly. Uh, also, we've developed a food business growth toolkit with resources on distribution, funding, co-manufacturing, among other topics to provide and inform a more holistic understanding of all of the different aspects of creating a food business um, and uh, point to a number of different resources that are available, either produced through branch food or some of our partnering um, organizations that can help uh, in support of your kind of continued growth and scale. Um, we will also be supporting entrepreneurs to help reach new capital sources through um, the Capital Access Grant, um, which is coming out uh, soon. The um, online application will be available soon. One of the main criteria for that uh, Capital Access Grant is um, that uh, sales of food businesses founded by women or minority founded businesses um, need to be less than $1.3 million in 2023 revenues. There's a few other criteria that are relevant, and we're happy to share those um, over the course of, you know, your um, uh, individual kind of outreach, um, but we'll be following up with an email after this webinar to detail um, more about those. 
And for the remainder of this year, we'll have ongoing programming through 2024. Um, so please sign up for our newsletter at branchfood.com to learn more about important dates upcoming for the grant, for the additional programming that we'll be doing through the fall um, and additional resources that will be um, coming available for entrepreneurs. Again, those uh, that are started um, or those that are um, based in Rhode Island, uh, particularly um, running businesses uh, that are food related and, and founded by women minority founders. Um, but as you can imagine, a lot of these resources are very valuable uh, for entrepreneurs that are based elsewhere and in need of very similar resources. Uh, so getting back to the webinar, uh, we're very excited um, to be hosting this today. And, you know, I think as we thought about the greatest needs on behalf of the community of food entrepreneurs that are trying to scale their food businesses, um, you know, have been looking at and helping to mentor entrepreneurs um, on topics related to food business uh, and investment uh, for as long as we've been talking about developing resources here at Branch Food. Um, so to answer the ongoing need. Uh, we invited individuals from across the business financing ecosystem to raise awareness about their work, talk about um, what they're doing with startups and how what they're offering may be a good fit um, based on the stage with which companies are at. And then, of course, um, you know, make themselves available uh, following this webinar uh, for anyone that would like to connect directly with them. And so our participants will walk through their slides um, uh, to talk a little bit more about each of their resources. But in advance of that, I really wanted to provide um, a little bit of an understanding of the landscape of options and how they sort of line up with different companies at different phases of, of development and quite frankly, revenues. Because for many of these options, businesses need to have a certain amount of revenues to be able to access and unlock these different sources of funding. And so, as we think about companies that are in, and, and most of the ones that are on the call uh, today are somewhere between the pre-revenue and I think sub $500 million in revenue, um, which you know we've detailed here, what types of financing are really available to you given those periods of time and growth. And so on the pre-revenue front, um, the ways that we've seen businesses largely capital capitalizing their efforts to date are through you know, personal savings, credit cards, second mortgages on their homes, friends or family, if you have friends and family that you know are capable of um, providing resources for your business. Um, we've you know, seen many entrepreneurs um, access micro loans um, or bridge loans for very specific types um, of uh, financing for their business, whether it be equipment related um, or you know, tied to other types of milestones. Um, additionally, grants and, and crowdfunding uh, are very common in terms of how businesses capitalize um, their efforts at the pre-revenue stages. And I would just reiterate that um, the capital access grant uh, that we will be um, uh, helping Rhode Island Commerce to share word about um, once the application is available uh, would be included in this type of grant that businesses have access to. Um, we will also be hearing from a crowdfunding option today. Um, to learn a little bit more about uh, the debt financing type of solutions that are available to emerging companies. Um, as businesses continue to grow and scale uh, between and are reaching revenues between $500,000 and $5 million, um, obviously that is a very big um, uh, range as we think about the types of businesses that we see. Um, but as you really start to grow, other types of financing become relevant. And so on the equity side, um, which is basically an exchange of um, a certain percentage of ownership in your company for funding from either angel investors or venture capital investors that are looking to effectively buy a shares in your company to be able to give you resources to, to grow and scale. Um, typically, we see businesses that are doing anywhere from 500000 to $5 million able to access that type of funding. Um, furthermore, loans, um, bank loans, government loans, um, we're seeing uh, more and more be able to um, uh, be made available for entrepreneurs at that revenue threshold. Um, and then, of course, you know, grants and crowdfunding. And we're seeing more and more on, by way of grants sort of geared towards women and minority founders. And we have a list of those um, resources available. I'm happy to share them directly with anyone that, that writes in uh, to be able to discover what they are and um, uh, see if, if your you know, company and your work qualifies. Um, and then after $5 million in revenue, you know, you're really able to access some of these additional sources of financing. So angel capital and venture capital, 
corporate venture capital, which we've seen more and more food related companies um, with corporate venture capital departments where they're actually able to invest some of the resources of the business in emerging companies that have a potentially strategic um, uh, value add to their core business. Um, those sort of venture capital businesses uh, or departments, I would say, have very unique um, funding criteria and also require some level of, if it's a, more of a tech company, technical validation in collaboration with their research and development team. Um, but happy to share word um, for any of you that are interested in learning more about the corporate venture capital landscape, uh, what we've seen, um, and sort of meet that you know kind of revenue threshold. Um, and then, you know, furthermore, I think bank loans, other types of loans, as well as mezzanine funding, which, you know, gets into the later stage businesses um, is also available um, once we, once businesses really do start to see the um, growth and scale that, you know, nationwide distribution is offering. So I wanted to provide that uh, snapshot just so all of you have a sense of, you know, really where the presenters today fall um, in terms of your business and your revenues and sort of where you um, uh, should be looking and, and dedicating your efforts um, to be sourcing funding for the growth of your business. Oh, and so lastly, I'll just uh, share our contact information. Once again, for those of you that are looking for um, direct support, reach out to us. We're happy to follow up. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome our first presenter, uh, Jay Puentes. Uh, Jay is currently the head of sales at Flex, a fintech company offering an all-in-one platform solution for all types of businesses across various industries. Uh, today, Flex's mission is to empower CEOs and CFOs to run the finance and operations of their business all on one platform, saving countless hours uh, every single month. Prior to joining Flex, Jay spent nearly eight years in the fintech space working with brands across various industries and servicing all types of finance-related needs, such as lines of credit, inventory financing, unsecured lending, corporate cards, buy now, pay later services, and banking services. Uh, Jay resides in New York City, and based on that uh, very um, comprehensive background, um, can probably help provide uh, uh, answers to any of your questions as it relates to obviously flex um, or other kind of financing questions that you may have. So um, Jay, if you wouldn't mind turning on your camera and we will um, uh, lend the mic over to you. Thank you so much, Lauren. Thanks for having us. I will go ahead and kick off. Great. That next slide. So ultimately we, we get asked the question, like why does Flex exist today? What do we do? How do we help brands? And our, our vision is really just to save CEOs, CFOs, VPs, anybody under the finance side of the business, just countless hours operating their business. We understand that it's extremely difficult to run a business. And we see today, uh, most companies will have various different platforms that they rely on to handle certain aspects of, of running the finances of a business. So our goal was to build one platform where these operators can essentially consolidate all of those platforms into one. And as you see today, we do partner with a number of food and bev companies along with other companies across other industries. So all in all, today we'll talk about you know, what our platform looks like, what it does, how we can help your business. And if there's any interest, we're, we're happy to, to take, the, take a call offline and discuss your certain uh, stage. So the first thing that we'll talk about on the next slide, Lauren, please, is our overall platform. So we've actually developed a mobile app version where you can actually operate your the finance aspect of your business right through your smartphone. And we've also built a desktop version. So you've got an, an iOS and an Android app along with a desktop version. These are a few screenshots of what the platform looks like once you log in. And really the platform consists of, of two separate things. One, it's our Flex checking account that we'll get into here in just a second. And the second is our corporate cards or credit cards, uh, essentially just giving you flexibility to extend float should you need it or maximize your cash back should you prefer that. So if we get into that next slide, we will dive into the checking account. So the, the checking account is actually a great tool for a number of reasons. We have really tried to understand what 
small businesses need from day one and also enterprise level businesses need once they're at, you know, more, more in revenue, call it 50, a hundred million plus. So we tried to build a checking account that has all of the tools and resources that you need, along with the security of having FDIC insurance up to roughly 2.5 million. We've actually just increased it to three, being able to issue an unlimited amount of employee cards. Vir these are virtual cards and or uh, physical cards that we will ship out to you. We also understand that businesses, especially once they're closer to a few million dollars in revenue, they start to hold cash in their checking account. And we know that a lot of bank accounts don't really yield too much interest on deposits, whereas you know, Flex, our mission was to build a bank account, checking account that does. So with Flex, uh, you can actually earn up to 3.62% interest on your cash deposits uh, for as long as you hold those deposits inside of Flex's checking account. We also have the ability to send money to any of your vendors across the, the nation and internationally at no fee. So we have no fee international wire capabilities and we have no cost domestic and ACH and, and wire capabilities as well which is pretty amazing considering we know a lot of other checking accounts do have fees. And ultimately this is just a, a massive cost savings, especially when you're getting started. We've also, we've also built a debit card product that yields back 1% cash back on all of your transactions. So with your Flex checking account, you're automatically going to get access to Flex's debit card product, and you're gonna earn 1% cash back on debit card transactions. So any vendors that don't accept, accept credit cards, but do debit cards, you can still earn some cash back on that where, you know, rather than wiring or ACHing, you use your debit card, you make that 1%. We've also made it very easy for you to bring all of your, your bill pay tools, your, your essentially all of the bills that your, your company has into the Flex platform and pay those bills using a number of different tools. The first is your actual Flex bank account, so the, the money that you hold in Flex, but also you can use the bill pay tool to extend your terms with those vendors up to 60 days via your Flex card. So if you do apply for a Flex credit card and you decide to pay your vendors using Flex's bill pay tool, you can get up to 60 days of flow and essentially pay that vendor with your Flex bank account using the bill pay tool. You can go to the next slide. Our really most popular product since we've started Flex has been what you see on the screen now, the first bullet point, which is our 60 days of flow card. That card essentially extends out your pay payment on all of your transactions for up to 60 days at no cost to you. So all in all, if you swipe your card today, that payment is not due until 60 days from now. It doesn't cost you anything, and it allows you to extend that payment for pretty much two months at, at no cost to you. So instead of using a line of credit or whatnot, if your vendors accept credit cards, you can get two months of flow at no cost. If you prefer to earn cash back, we do also have cards that yield back up to 2% cash back. And we have a number of different options that we can customize. That's a week payback, a couple of weeks, a month, month and a half. Those cards can include some cash back. So it really just allows us to customize all of our options, understanding what you need, what you're looking for into one platform, one card setup inside the Flex platform. Flow plus cash back. We built in some early pay incentives hence the name Flex, where if you go with a 60-day card, but you get into a season where you actually may have an influx of cash coming in, busier holiday season or something like that, you can pay early and earn cash and a cash back incentive. So depending on your setup with Flex, depending on what you want to go with from day one, if that's 60 days afloat, or if you want to get straight into the cash back card, you can elect to go with essentially a hybrid, which would be a 60-day card, but if you decide to pay back early, you earn some cash back. And next slide. If 
anyone is interested in having a conversation, I believe my LinkedIn, yep, my LinkedIn's there. We're happy to have a conversation, set up some time to chat with one of our sales consultants and myself. Or if you just want to see what you could qualify for in terms of checking account, APY, and or credit cards, corporate cards, feel free to submit an application via that link on the left side or scan the barcode and it'll take you directly to the online app. It's about five minutes. That Great. Foods. Thank you very much, Jay. We appreciate your presentation and great overview of Flex and all of the options that you're making available to companies that are growing and scaling and really need that length of time um, to repay um, uh, so much of the, the expenses that are incurred with growing a food business. Thanks to you, Lauren. All right, great. So next up, uh, we have Jacqueline Harbor, account executive at Honeycomb Credit. Uh, Jackie is the Philadelphia manager at Honeycomb Credit, a community investment platform that connects small businesses with local investors. With a strong background in finance and a passion for supporting local entrepreneurs, Jacqueline plays a pivotal role in helping a numerous food businesses scale through innovative funding solutions. At Honeycomb Credit, she empowers small businesses to grow by offering accessible and community-driven financing options, making her an expert voice on alternative financing strategies for scaling in the food industry. So Jackie, thank you and over to you. Thank you, Lauren. Um, so Honeycomb Credit exists as an opportunity for local businesses to connect to non-traditional funding sources. We're looking to bring back relationship and community lending. For a lot of businesses, it can be difficult to access capital for one reason or another, whether it is because of criteria that they're not able to meet or um, potentially the, the cost of capital. And so as a community lending platform, we're able to make capital much more accessible and affordable because we allow businesses to source their capital through their fans, customers, friends, and family members. And what that means is being able to then pay back community members, overall creating a circular economy that financially empowers local communities um, where businesses are accessing their funding through. So if you could go to the next slide, please. We help businesses raise on average anywhere from about $25,000 to $250,000. We've certainly raised more, but um, because of certain SEC regulations, this is where the range typically um, is closest to. And what happens is we help businesses raise capital depending on how much they need. What's the minimum amount of funding that they need or the maximum amount that they um, would need for their project. And whatever we raise in between those two numbers through a pretty rigorous marketing campaign that we do is the principal on the loan. And this is again funded through the community, be it friends, family members, neighbors, customers, or Honeycomb's network of investors. And all of the principal and interest is paid back to those community investors, which is where business owners get the chance to put a paycheck into the pockets of people who really love their business. Um, these Loans get paid back over either three years or five years in monthly repayments. We offer six months interest only payments at the start for businesses to have more time to be able to use their capital to build out their project and make those initial payments a bit more digestible. If a business is interested in applying with Honeycomb, um, there's a couple of things we take into consideration, such as personal credit, um, a guarantee, personal guarantee. It's not always necessary, depending on the financial health of the business. Um, legally required to collect financial statements, tax returns, and business registration documents. But a majority of what goes into this process is understanding the business um, and their presence in their community, because it's inherently de-risking to have strong community ties when your community members are willing to vote with their wallet on your project. It tells uh, us as well as the community and, and business owners themselves that people want this project so much that they're willing to put their money where their mouth is, which inherently will let us know that this is a positive project for the business to be able to move forward with. So um, if you could continue to the next slide, a really great example of this is Sarah, the owner of Brothmonger, a soup business that's 
based out of Pittsburgh, she was able to raise $99,751 from 117 community investors in order to scale and grow her soup business. Uh, she had outgrown the kitchen she was in and needed to relocate to a larger commercial kitchen, do some renovating and outfitting for the kitchen and engage her community to be able to fund this. And again, that means that people of her community were able to invest to get her to the total amount of funding that she needed. And as that loan gets repaid, it's going back into the pockets of her community members. When she repays her community members, it's statistically likely that they spend more money with the business, they share about it more online, um, and even tell other people to, to, to shop with the business as well. So our alumni, much like Sarah, will see increases in year-over-year -year revenue, press coverage, and social media presence because this investment opportunity not only causes a financial investment, but gets people really emotionally invested in the business in a super intimate way. Um, and then if anybody has questions about learning more, if you could connect, uh, continue to the next slide, I would love to chat about it. We work with a bunch of food and beverage businesses. It's our number one industry. 56% have been women owned. Um, and we love hearing the stories of business owners and helping engage the community in a super intimate way. So feel free to email, call, text me, or go to the website to learn more. Excellent. Thank you so much, Jacqueline, for your presentation and for sharing more on the great work of Honeycomb Credit. Okay, next up, uh, we're thrilled to welcome Susan Murray, who is the Executive Director of the Southeastern Economic Development uh, Corporation, a mission-driven economic development organization serving Southeastern Massachusetts and all of Rhode Island. Uh, SEED's mission is to promote economic growth and provide training, education, and equitable access to affordable capital for entrepreneurs seeking to grow um, a small business. SEED works independently or in conjunction with local financial institutions to provide below market term loans and focuses on underserved individuals and markets. So Sue, if you wouldn't mind uh, turning on your camera, we will get started with your presentation. Do we have Sue? So I can see you in the participants list. Okay, well, maybe um, Sue, while we wait for you to um, figure out your camera, um, perhaps we can go on to our branch venture group presentation, which is uh, going to be delivered by Marsha Hooper. Marsha, are you there and able to turn on your camera? Okay. I am. Thank you. Well, let me introduce you to our group and get to the BBG slides here. All right. So, uh, Marsha, um, uh, for all of you, by way of introduction, Marsha is the co-founder of Branch Venture Group, uh, the sister company to Branch Food that I had mentioned before. Uh, Marsha serves as a partner and is an active angel investor um, focused on, along with the group members, uh, food startups targeting food products, technology, uh, business services, and food-related companies, including ag tech and sustainability-oriented businesses. Uh, Marsha has over 35 years of venture investing experience, having been a partner at Advent International and Ampersand Ventures. She also serves as a senior advisor to Bowside Capital, a private equity firm focused on small business capitalization markets. Marsha has served as a director of over 30 private and publicly listed companies and began her career at IBM in marketing. She received her bachelor's of science degree in chemistry and mathematics from Brown University uh, down in Rhode Island. Uh, she also earned her master's of arts degree in chemistry from Columbia and a master's of business administration from Harvard, the Harvard School of, of Business. Marsha, we're thrilled to have you uh, and over to you to talk more about Branch Venture Group's work. Great, great. Well, I thought, I wonder if we could go to the next slide. Um, I thought what I would do is really kind of lay out some of the landscape on early stage venture capital, because much like uh, the debt and loan market, it's vast and uh, people may 
talk about it, but it means different things to different people. So what I thought I'd do is first, who are the people that are investing in venture capital? Well, most people think about institutions. So these are venture capital firms. They've gone out and raised a fund and they put those funds in specific companies. Um, now, and especially at the early stage, um, you're seeing much more individuals making those investments in early stage. And they are referred to as angel investors. So they are investing in equity uh, and um, their individuals. And then you have the sort of new category, super angels, um, often which are part of family offices. And they're almost hybrids between individuals and institutions in that they can write six, sometimes seven figure checks uh, and they can play a much larger role, uh, but they don't have a, they're not a specific institution. And as Lauren mentioned before, uh, strategic partners, and we've certainly seen at Branch where food companies and you know corporations are really hungry, um, sorry for the pun, um, to get involved with um, novel innovative companies. So we're seeing um, strategic partnerships much earlier in the life cycle of a company than in other areas of the venture capital landscape. So that's the who, the what. Uh, venture capital is equity-based and it goes by names like series C or series A. In some cases, when you're very early, uh, it will often present as a convertible note. Um, this is a note that earns interest, but it's uh, it will convert to equity at some point in the future. And the reason for those notes is uh, doing an equity-based financing these days probably costs $50,000. So unless you're raising substantial amount of money, it really doesn't make sense to spend that much on lawyers and convertible notes. On the other hand, are very inexpensive, often just several thousand. And there's something even easier than convertible notes. And these are known as SAFEs, which stands for a simple agreement for equity. And it's, I give you money, entrepreneur, and at some point you're going to give me equity, but I, um, uh, the price yet to be determined. Often, both convertible notes and safe will have caps, so the price won't get above a certain level. Uh, but um, that's sort of the the types of terms. And in the Q and A, happy to go into more. So why take venture capital? Well, a it's not debt. You don't have to pay it back until there's a liquidity event, um, which is great for a business if you can get it you often gain expertise at no cost to the company. The investors who want to come in and take ownership generally know something about your business or your target market or how to grow companies, or at least they should before you take their money. So there's some expertise. You often get to access that amazing network and you can really set the company up for success, really leveraging your time and capabilities with other experienced people. Well, why wouldn't you do it? That all sounds great. It can be very complicated and it's often expensive. Um, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, they may get the expense, but they don't really think about the complication. You are taking on an owner. If you think of debt like an Uber ride, I book it at the end, I'm gonna have to pay something. This is more like a relationship or a marriage. You're signing a marriage license and you gotta go through a lot to get there. Um, so you really, integrating um, yourself with the investor. Um, you may risk your role at a company. Often investors want to have the right to um, uh, appoint a CEO of the company. If that ends up not being you, you could um, be out. So uh, thinking about the role and where you are. Um, you also have to have and develop a pretty active and clear long-term planning objective. If you're early on, not exactly sure where you want to go, venture capital is probably not for you. And most important, and it's one of the things we talk a lot about, is interpersonal chemistry. They're fantastic investors and they're fantastic entrepreneurs. But if the investor you meet, you don't get along with or vice versa, do not move forward. And this is, a, again, much more akin to a long-term relationship and you better be comfortable and um, open. Next slide. So for the emerging companies, so how do you know if you're ready for venture capital? Um, a couple things that I think really important, do you understand and have you identified the key risks in the business? 
um, because that's where venture capitalists, um, either institutional angels, are really going to focus on. So if you're still trying to figure out what those are, you may want to look for another source. Um, are you growth oriented? Um, is there going to be some kind of hockey stick? The role of a venture capitalist is to give you money, but they want more money back, which means you you have to have uh, a business that's going to grow and deliver often, you know, three, five, eight X um, their investment returns, depending on the venture capitalists and their and their needs. Uh, do you understand where you're going to be in, in five years back to having a long term vision? And why do you think you can get there? Um, how do you know you're going to overcome those risks that, that we talked about? And then do you know, understand how much investment and time is needed to reach cash flow break even operations, something all venture capitalists really want to focus on because that's one of the biggest risks, how much capital you need. And lastly, do you have a team? Um, most venture capitalists, angels, institutions, and, and corporates really want to invest in a team, not a single entrepreneur. They want to know you have the capability of recruiting and building a team. And then lastly, what are your own personal goals? If they're not to get on this rocket ship of growth, build a big team, uh, really accomplish a lot, it, you know, there are other ways um, to raise money. Venture capitalists may not be for you. Um, and what are the risks? Well, you're going to give up some ownership and that's some control. Uh, there will be a liquidity event in five to seven years. There will be a sale. And this is something a lot of entrepreneurs don't really focus on. But once they take venture capital, the venture capitalists are going to say, who are we selling to? And all of a sudden, wait a minute, I'm building this great business, something I want to do for the rest of my life. And I'm going to sell to somebody else. How does that sit with you? So uh, important to be aware of that. Um, as I mentioned, there are job security risks um, that come up. And this is something most first-time entrepreneurs when they work with venture capitalists say, what bothered you the most? It's time-consuming. And you're spending a lot of time educating your investors in what you're doing and why you think you're going to be successful. And that can seem very unproductive if you don't reach conclusion to get in the capital. Next slide. So what's my advice as we're sitting here and you're thinking about all the ways you could finance the business? First of all, turn tables on that education. Get an education yourself. Um, it's a free education talking to industry knowledgeable VCs and angels and listen and learn. Go say, hey, is this business look attractive to you? What would I need to achieve before it would? Understand, and it's terrific and it's totally free. Uh, as I said, chemistry matters. If that spidey sense says, eh, maybe I don't want to sit in a small room, you know, running through financial statements with this person, maybe move on. Um, uh, there is absolutely no harm in talking to um, venture capitalists early in your company development. Um, they'll remember what you said. And especially if you do it, I think a lot of people hold back thinking, well, if I get rejected, will they talk to me again? Absolutely. Especially if when you talk to them again, you've continued to grow, develop, and, you know, have a stronger, you know, view for how you're going to grow in the, in the future. Um, uh, important that a lot of entrepreneurs um, and and we see at branch and and it it does matter. Keep in touch if you get a no. Um, I always like this Louis Pasteur uh, quote: "Chance favors the prepared mind." Even if you get a no, drop a line to the investor you saw and said, "Hey, appreciate the time. We've introduced a new flavor. We've opened more doors. We're we're moving in this way. We've improved our margin. Whatever." kind of issues, just just let them know you're still out there working. Um, that does matter. And uh, it means, you know, you listened and you, and you were thoughtful. Um, the other thing is venture capital does not mean you'll be a success. And not raising venture capital means um, you won't be a success. There are many successful companies that didn't raise venture capital. Um, so if it works for you and it fits the mold, go for it. If it doesn't, um, you can find other ways. But that said, most successful companies have gotten venture capital. They have gotten this expertise. They have grown. They've accessed this network. They've really been able to um, achieve a lot financially. And um, I heard a quote earlier today in a phone call, which to me, if, you know, to all the entrepreneurs on the call, 
um, resonated with me. It's apparently it's a Navy SEALs motto that the only easy day was yesterday. So each day it's, you know, in this world of starting a company is hard, um, but uh, you will make progress. So with that, um, I think there's a, my contact on the next slide and I'll turn it over to our next speaker. Excellent. Thank you very much, Marsha. All right. Um, our next speaker, we can bring Sue. Um, Sue, if you're available to turn on your uh, video, great, and unmute yourself. Perfect. Uh, I'm on my phone uh, with my computer muted. So is it working? It's working. We can hear oh, you perfectly. All right. Thank you all so right. much. And over to you to talk more about uh, SEED and the small business financing and assistance you offer. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, so thank you for this opportunity. I think Seed has some great programs that we'd love to share with the audience and welcome any questions. I'm not sure where to look actually, but okay. So Seed, first slide, um, Seed stands for Southeastern Economic uh, Development Company Corporation. And we assist small business with free training, education, and low interest term loans only. So we don't do lenders of credit. We don't do credit cards. Uh, we are an SBA micro lender. Uh, we've been around since 1982. So we do have, like I said, the SBA micro loan program, and that's loans from $5,000 to $50,000. And uh, for some uh, entrepreneurs in this space, if you're maybe doing your, your food business as a side hustle or you have an idea and you want to test it out, maybe you're in a shared kitchen, um, you just need a little bit of working capital to get started, that might be a good option for you. Uh, we don't take an ownership stake. Our interest rate is 7%. Um, and our mission really is to create jobs and start new businesses. So next page, please. Uh, loan program. So we do have uh, several different programs here for uh, founders in maybe the more experienced space. We provide financing up to $5.5 million if you needed to buy equipment or a building. For your business. So there may be some of you on the call today that are interested in that. And the way that program works is we partner with a bank and the business owner only has to put in 10% for the purchase of the real estate, which if anyone's looking at a commercial building today, uh, standard bank financing can be upwards of 25% down for a commercial building. So by partnering with Seed and a bank, uh, the SBA program only, allow, uh, only requires 10%. So that's very helpful. Um, our small loan program, this starts at $50,000 and goes up to $350,000. And this might be if you need a little bit more working capital or smaller equipment that you don't need millions of dollars for. Um, our interest rate on that is 6% fixed. Or if we don't have a partner, we charge 7%. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, the micro loan program, that's from $5,000 to $50,000. The interest rate on that is 7%. And it is a term loan up to seven years for every payment, seven year amortization, so no balloon. Uh, we do require um, a FICO score of 600 or better. And if there's no collateral, the FICO score does go up to 680. Uh, but definitely looking for startups in that space or people in the very early stages of their business. Um, next page, please. All right, so I just went over a lot of that. Uh, loans up to 50. So what can you use the money for? So it could be general working capital. Uh, you know you need uh, a point of sale system. You know you need a marketing campaign. You need to build a website. You need to hire someone and revenue might not start for six months once they get on board. Uh, so general working capital uh, is fine. We understand that that's required. Leasehold improvements, if you're going into a storefront and you're going to lease the space instead of buy the building, you might invest a little bit uh, in the space and need money for that. We always encourage you to seek the landlord's help with that, though. In this day and age, if there's vacancy, you can use that to your favor. Uh, machinery and equipment, furniture and fixtures, inventory. And we can consider refinance of some small business credit card debt. Uh, we understand that, you know, your rates on that are in the high 20s, sometimes 30 percent. So we can take a look at that and try to get those payments down for you as well. So that's up to 50,000, 7%, seven seven-year term, no prepayment. So we always encourage people to pay us off early if they want to, because what we do with that money, you pay us off, we lend it to someone else. So that always uh, is a good thing for us. If you, are, if you graduate, pay us off, we congratulate. And start a business is one other thing is that we do require a secondary source of repayment 
So if you are a pure startup, we do need either a co-signer or we need you to have employment and have your business as kind of a ramp up phase. Um, next slide, please. So we cover Mass in Rhode Island with our loan programs. Uh, we can cover from $5,000 to $350,000 uh, with our own money. And then the 504 program really starts over $350,000. And that's in partnership with the SBA. Uh, and that is a 25-year fixed rate. So if you need larger dollars, uh, those fixed rates are in the low sixes right now for 25-year fixed, which is amazing. Same use of funds, working capital, real estate, furniture, and fixtures. Uh, the rate does vary between six or seven, depending on if seed has a bank partner. And for this money, a little bit larger dollars, we can go up to 10 years for the term and the amortization can go up to 20. And again, no prepayment. Congrats to you if you can pay us off early. And so our funding sources on this, very important, I'd like to thank Rhode Island Commerce Corporation, which is part of the call today. Uh, we get money from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, uh, in addition to Rhode Island and several federal and state uh, other agencies. And they entrust us with this money to again, further our mission of job creation and funding startup new businesses. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the 504 program I mentioned uh, briefly. We have an example of this actually is a large piece of equipment uh, in a food service business. Uh, and it's actually for a machine to make uh, one particular bakery product, which I don't want to say because then we'll say who it is. Uh, but it's a $2 million machine to make one particular piece of delicious food. Uh, and the efficiency on that is going to go up tenfold once they get the machine in place uh, and they get 10 years to pay that loan back at a very low fixed rate. So that's great. Um, next slide, please. Oh, and then this is us. This is our website, our phone numbers. These are my lending team on the phone. Uh, we have two lenders on the phone today, Tom Bacon, Angela Perrier. Uh, if you have any questions, you can pop them in the chat. And I think that the questions will get to us. And we welcome you to check out our website. Uh, we have a business plan on there. If anyone's thinking about uh, maybe they have an idea and they want to turn it into a business, we have a very, absolutely very easy to follow business plan. <clears throat> uh, we have cash flow templates projections, uh, anything you might need to see if it's even a viable idea. Uh, sometimes the vetting it is the best thing to do before you get too far down the road. Uh, and we're happy to help you with any of those forms. So check us out on the website and let us know if you have any questions. Excellent. Thank you very much, Sue. You're welcome. All right. So we are now jumping to Perishing Ventures. And if Tor, uh, you wouldn't mind turning on your camera, we can go ahead and get started. Uh, Tor Trivers is the CIO and co-founder of Perishing Ventures. He focuses on providing flexible financing to underserved private companies, making his expertise in private debt a key part of the customer's success journey. Before joining Perishing, Tor was managing director and head of private credit group at C CBID, Capital from 2020 to 2022. Uh, from 2014 to 2020, he was managing director of Asia Structured uh, Credit at the Carlisle Group, leading the Carlisle Asia Structured Credit Opportunities Fund, which invested in private transactions and financing growing middle market borrowers. Uh, he believes his experience uh, that obtaining the right financing enables, en enables aspiring entrepreneurs to build and scale, scale successful enterprises. Prior to Carlisle, Tor was a partner of Northstone Peak and a director of Natixix. I'm probably mispronouncing that, Tor, so my apologies, <laughs> North America. Uh, Tor started his career at Namora Securities in New York after earning his Bachelor's of Arts degree in economics from Dartmouth College in New Hampshire. So we've got New England roots, uh, despite the fact that you're joining us from very far away. So thank you, Tor, uh, and over to you. Thanks, Lauren, and everyone at Branch Foods. Um, and the audience and the other presenters. Uh, so Pershing um, is a company that provides growth capital for revenue generating early stage businesses and SMEs. Um, we can flip to the next page. So our borrowers, like many of your businesses, are early stage and producing revenue, but in many cases, not profitable. And for this reason, can be underserved by the traditional sources of financing, 
which means banks and to some extent equity providers such as VCs. Um, and that's why we're talking about alternative funding uh, sources. So most of our business is lending in the form of revenue-based finance, which is an alternative financing that pays back a small amount each month, calculated as a percentage of the customer's revenue. And we find this structure allows us to provide credit to underserved companies while also avoiding cash flow crunches for the borrowers. And typically this works quite well with other forms of debt and financing um, as some of the other presenters here are offering, as well as fitting and working well in conjunction with equity raises, either before, during, or even after. Um, our typical first transaction with a customer is in the $250,000 to $500,000 range. Um, and the amount usually increases as the customer grows. We fund as quickly as two to two to four weeks from the initial discussion. And if we look to the right side of the slide, best use cases are where clients are leveraging the funding to drive revenue growth, um, expanding sales and marketing, fulfilling order backlogs, funding geographic expansions, or even acquiring another revenue accretive business. And all of these things are part of scaling operations and creating value. Um, if we can go to the next page. So in the Venn diagram, we see ourselves as an alternative private credit financier sitting at the intersection of venture debt, direct lending, and specialty finance. Our basic transaction, well, we design it to fit your specific business. It requires no collateral, so it's unsecured. Uh, it's not dilutive to equity. It doesn't require a board seat or a personal guarantee, so it's founder friendly. Um, has no maturity date. Uh, it pays off when it pays off. And we don't have a prepayment penalty after four months. So mechanically, the transaction is fairly simple, but possibly different than others. Uh, funding is delivered and this amount will be repaid, but it's gonna be repaid in monthly amounts, which are determined as a percent of the borrower's monthly revenue. Typically our borrowers are using somewhere between five and say 15% of their revenue to repay the debt. Where we set this will affect the time it takes to repay the debt, but by design, when the company has a good month, it pays a bit more, and on a bad month, proportionally, the customer pays less. So again, the financing is, is not squeezing the operation. There are two fees or costs to the financing. Uh, one is a one-time uh, administrative charge, which is 3.5%, kind of like an origination fee. We capitalize that and it's paid at the end of the transaction. And the other is the monthly fee, monthly service charge, which is paid each month until the debt is repaid. Um, this is a fixed dollar amount, typically one to 2% of the funded amount. Normally repayment takes between 12 and 24 months. We flip to the next page, please. So I think, you know, an important question is what metrics are needed to qualify and what does a typical customer look like. Um, and given that most early stage businesses are not yet profitable, we can't really look at all the same things a bank does um, or we'd come to the same conclusion. So while we care about profit margins and growth rates, we also focus on intangibles like the management team, customer stakeholders, et cetera. That said, some metrics for our customers, minimum time in business of one year, minimum prior year revenue, of 250,000 or a monthly recurring revenue of 25,000 plus. Typically our customers fall between 750,000 and 5 million. Our minimum financing size is 25,000, but again, typically it's 250 to 500,000. Um, growth plus uh, profit needs to exceed 40% plus. Minimum runway of six months or more. Um, we need to use accounting software that integrates with our DD and transaction management platform. That's going to be QuickBooks Zero, et cetera. Uh, we do not transact in the crypto and cannabis industries, which may or may not be applicable to this audience. And generally, our funds are not to be used for real estate or infrastructure. So while we are agnostic on the industry, you can see from the uh, clients on the right, 
that we do have a number of customers in the food and related spaces, such as artisanal bread, uh, plant-based dairy alternatives, beverages, wellness, smart water solutions, as well as concentrations in workplace, tech, clean tech, femtech, and SaaS. Next page, please. So thank you. I'm looking forward to the Q&A. And of course, feel free to reach out after the webinar, either through our website or directly uh, to learn how we can help. Great, thank you very much, Tor. And if I could have all of our panelists, um, please join the conversation, uh, turning their videos and their audio on. Uh, we will get to our Q&A. Um, so I think we had a question for Sue. Uh, Sue, if you're uh, still here with us, um, one of the questions that came through was regarding the um, seed loans. Do they require a personal guarantee? Can you please? Um... Yes, they do. Yes, all of our loans require personal guarantee. Excellent. Okay, thank you. I hope that answers the question. Um, Juan, thank you for asking. Uh, do we have any other questions from our group? If we do, please uh, include them in the chat. Um, we're happy to the, relay them to our panelists and um, uh, get all of your questions answered. Um, I am curious. It sounds like all of you are working with uh, food-related businesses at various stages of development. Um, do you also work with food tech, um, ag tech companies as well? We have a couple of um, entrepreneurs on the call that uh, represent technology companies in the food industry. And um, curious if any of you have strong case studies or um, feedback on working with those types of businesses and utilizing your resources. Sue, so it looks like no, not too many come through seed. I mean, we're really pretty small, Steve, so I'm not sure if food tech is that, or what? what's the example for if someone on the call, I'd be curious to learn. Well, at Branch Venture Groups, we do work with food tech and ag tech companies. And what's interesting in the venture capital world, if you have technology, especially if it can be patented or is proprietary, often you'll get investors at an earlier stage because you're building in those protections through your technology. Um, so if on the other hand, you're more of a consumer package, good company, uh, then investors like to see more revenue, but uh, uh, a lot going on. Examples in the food tech and ag tech can be things like innovative packaging solutions, Susan. So think about people that are trying to maybe replace plastic with enhanced um, recyclable materials that are not plastic. Um, could be an example. Uh, uh, ag tech can be things like soil nutrition. How do you make um, uh, soil so that you can get crops that not only uh, a lot of people worrying about drought, but we've seen entrepreneurs that are now worrying about floods where we're getting too much rain and they can rot crops just like drought. So beginning to think about how do you, are there ways you can build in um, uh resiliency to, to crops. And the other thing is right now, big area is around um, food is medicine. There's a lot going on with how, what we consume, how it infects your health. And so a lot of those sort of start to move into that, you know, kind of food and health related. And people would, would sort of call that in the food tech. So it's a, it's a pretty open category, but at Branch Venture Group, uh, we've met some wonderful entrepreneurs have invested in a number of companies in both the food tech and ag tech and um, are always interested to meet entrepreneurs that uh, have exciting ideas that uh, are, you know, can have a real impact. Thank Great. you, Marsha. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm going to jump in and just um, get through a few of our questions because I know we're at time. So uh, quickly, Jackie, just curious on the topic of Honeycomb Credit, how does it compare to platforms like Kiva and Mainvest? Yeah, that's a great question. So one of the biggest differences is that um, Mainvest unfortunately no longer exists, but they did a revenue share option. So the structure in their repayments actually was determined based on the monthly revenue of the businesses. 
and it's paid back through a multiple. It's very similar to a payday loan or a merchant cash advance in the way that those are structured. Honeycomb primarily offers debt refinancing where it's a fixed interest rate repaid on a fully amortizing loan. Um, aside from that, with Kiva, what happens is they actually only lend up to $10,000. So we have a different range and threshold in which we're able to help businesses fund. Kiva is an investment opportunity that essentially takes from a pool of investments where you're not able to invest or as a business, I should say, as a business, you're not necessarily sourcing directly from your immediate network, customers, friends, and family. Honeycomb's sweet spot, our, our real bread and butter, is being able to engage your existing customer network um, and personal network to be able to source the funding that you need rather than going on a large scale so that your more immediate network can then convert from a customer to an investor to a, a brand evangelist and advocate for the business. Excellent. Thank you, Jackie. So I know we're at time. I know we have questions still um, in the chat. I'm going to take um, a note of them and connect you with the individuals that can help provide feedback on those questions directly, um, both Angela and Kimberly um, and Karen. <laughs> so thank you for submitting your questions. I'm sorry we're we're at time, um, but want to be respectful of, uh, I'm sure, others' meetings following this event. So um, the recording will be made available online. Um, thank you very much to our panelists, Jackie, Sue, Jay, Marsha, and Tor, uh, for spending your valuable time bringing our community up to speed on all of the different uh, financing options that you offer to food-related businesses. Also, thank you to Rhode Island Commerce Corporation, Foster Garvey, Connect Pay, and the Cambridge Innovation Center for your partnership in helping to support scaling food businesses, particularly in Rhode Island. Um, again, if you would like to learn any more about the resources that we provide at Branch Food and the resources that we're creating for this grant um, to support women and minority founded businesses, please reach out to us, sign up for our newsletter, um, and we look forward to being in touch to support on um, your specific questions and needs to the best of our ability. So with that, um, I will let everyone uh, adjourn and uh, thank you all again for participating in this webinar. Thanks, Lauren. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Lauren. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank